Well, 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 welcome. Well, 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 well. Someone mentioned we hadn't done that in a while, and uh, we said, yeah, because it got annoying, but we figured we'd bring it back this week. And so, it was well, well, the first well, thing well. we did this episode. <laughs> yeah, right away. Uh, you're listening to the podcast for all things Destiny PvP, and that podcast is called Crucible Radio. And hello, I'm your host, I'm Bones. And I'm your other host, Swain. And we're going to talk about the Crucible like we always do. So... This week was Black Armory. Did you uh, did you get a forge clear, Swain? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, never mind. <laughs> I mean, uh, I kind of have like a little bit of uh, a hot take in me. Oh boy! All right at the top, Andrew. Can we, Andrew? Do please. This? It, is there? A, I don't think there's a mild take drop. But just give me the hot <laughs> take, and we'll, we'll we'll decide later. Hey yo, CR, can you throw me a hot take? <laughs> I am 100% fine with this new way of doing Destiny releases. That is the seasons being week after week content rather than one full day of uh, crazy content release. Um, And I know there is a lot of people that want it in some way that full day of their content give me my sweet sweet content um i'm okay with it i'm okay with this this new way because on tuesday i didn't have to spend the whole day being a disgusting (laughs) human at my desk yeah like you did the tuesday before that (laughs) i didn't get up after 10 hours of gaming and like my whole body is creaking and i'm like oh I shouldn't have ate all of that pizza and, and and snacks all day instead of real food. <laughs> that's that's what content releases were for me before. It was just like these like really gross days of like nonstop gaming, and uh, now y- you just get it spread out over two months. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want one of those a year. You know, like I want the Destiny Two release, and I want Forsaken, and I wanted to like take the day off and just go nuts and have all this new stuff to explore for sure. But yeah, like I can't do that every other Tuesday. It's too much. Yeah. So like there's a lot of things going on with destiny that I've been like selectively just been able to say no, like, all right, I didn't do much festival loss stuff. That's fine. I didn't want it. (laughs) And it didn't seem like a, like time well invested for me. So I put my time elsewhere. Um, Black armory it seems up my alley. I am slowly getting there. I'm in no rush to do the raid. I'm in no rush to get the forge done. Do want that machine gun though. Cause I ran into it a bunch in the crucible and that was, you know, a thing, but, uh, I will get to it when I get to it this weekend. Probably. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a fun little activity and I works my way up in order to clear it and, of course, Dan jumped in with a much higher light level and helped me beat it. And I got a decent roll on my machine gun, but with the assist. Yeah, uh, it's it's going to be like a good activity kind of do uh, frequently. Like, to be honest, I think probably grinding a forge, doing all those bounties and stuff is going to be way more fun than me for me than doing Dreaming City stuff, uh, especially at this point in time. So it's going to be another oh, weekly man. thing. And I think it has cool rewards attached to it. Uh, and the chance at perfect rolls on those things is nice. So yeah, I want to get my legendary machine gun. Although Thunderlord, man, oh. <laughs> Thunderlord is it's so uh, good. It's so good. Um, <laughs> I really thought I would not like machine guns back, and I'm like all for them. That I I, I have to say, I was a little grumbly about them, but now I'm like, yeah, <laughs> these are good. Uh, I was a little grumbly about them today because I ran into what is it, Quick Play, mm-hmm. and I was just like. The first person got it and it never went away like in this quick play match. And I was just like, I mean, I wouldn't say it never went away. I ended up, we ended up being able to turn the tides. But the first half of this match was just like dominated by machine guns on the other team. And we just could not, like Thunderlord has so much range. You just could not get close enough to like take it off. Yeah, it's crazy. So... 
Um, yeah, Black Armory is out. It is what it is. It, it will be a content for two months, essentially. Uh, we'll slowly have our exotics drip in. We'll have uh, the last word returning, which is... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't even know what to think about that. That's... <laughs> right. That is like... I I, I kind of talked about it a little bit. I think it was last week, or maybe it was just a conversation with friends. I don't know. Uh, but it's nice to see these weapons affect the meta rather than uh, nerfs affecting the meta. For sure. Because we're having like, simply just putting Thunderlord into the game made game Gambit different. It made the Crucible different. Like these small changes are just like way, 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 way altering the meta. So like, I'm sure if the last word drops and it is crazy good, uh, that will change it as well. Exotics seem to be the key to changing the meta. Get people off of one thing and onto another thing, and they yeah. can't run two, so <laughs> you got to choose. Yeah, choice. That's I mean that's that's it, right? That was the choice. Then from the very beginning in Destiny and One, you can pick one exotic, uh, and that will determine your play style. And that's what they always wanted it to do. It's not about exotics are the strongest weapons, but the exotics are your style, and uh, the weapons really do that. Yeah, it's uh, I like these crazy strong things, and I'm always hesitant to, at this point, like offer anything. Like as far as nerfs go, like there's some talk today about how Queensbreakers is crazy good, and it's like, well, I mean, yes, it is good, but you take that away, and another, <laughs> it's it. Another thing fills its place. It's Hydra. These <laughs> the weapons in, in Destiny are Hydra. Cut <laughs> off one head, two more appear. You're just gonna yeah. have two other snipers that are really good, and people are just gonna go to snipers. So, um, it's a whole long equation that uh, none of us are smart enough to figure out entirely on our own. No, not at all. So it would seem. Um, but they, <laughs> as it always is. If we had an interesting twab this week, though, and they kind of brought up some of the concerns people have for uh, Crucible and some like patches and everything. I think a lot of people were expecting some big Crucible tuning with the uh, the season change, uh, but it looks like they've got a lot in the works if you want to dive into it, Bones. Yeah, sure. I mean, these, these are all coming. These are, in some cases, a month or more away. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a little bit a long wait, especially when you know what's coming. But... Uh, Josh Hamrick returned to the TWAB and addressed all of the the hot button issues for sure. And so it's good to know that it's coming and that will affect how we choose our loadouts, how we go into the game, how we play and what we want to try out for fun going forward. So, of course, yeah, he hit honestly all the big the big topics, I feel like right <laughs> away he mentioned snipers, uh, the the availability of low zoom scopes you know, how, how comfortable they feel. And, you know, they don't have, they didn't have anything on flinch, but you know, like there's little things they can move around and maybe even headshot supers. And that's, that's kind of something you feel a little like what feels icky, right? Like flinch is like, it's all flinch. Everything's happening, but it feels icky when you hit that perfect shot on a Nova warp and they don't die like that. You feel it, you know, you feel it in your gut and your heart. Uh, so I like that sort of thing, but it's always, it's really hard to to hit those shots and to not have them pay off is that's what what sucks. That's the that's that that rough feeling when you're like, oh, that would have been the craziest <laughs> clip of me shooting that, you know, Nova Warp Warlock as he came out of the blink. I would have saved my team from a mass destruction. Like I would have been the hero of this comp game. (laughs) Instead, I look like an idiot with a sniper rifle in his hand. Now I just picked up a new one. Actually, it's the one that's been dropping from the Vanguard, the persuader. Yes. Yes. The energy, uh, 140 RPM. Now I don't know if this one's going to be headshotting supers in the future because it is that, uh, supremacy style, but man, it's real snappy really lightweight and it feels really, really fast. I got one with snapshot and outlaw and it's like, it's pretty good. Like I didn't, I don't really like fake Christ foul. I don't like the sound and feel of it, but this one was like, oof, finally I've got a energy sniper that I want to mess with. Yeah. There's definitely 
something about that sniper that I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time with in the future. If you're on console, it's got uh, a lot of aim assist. If you're on a controller like me. (laughs) Yeah, or if you're on a controller, of course. Uh, Speaking of Nova Warp, though, uh, they also have some plans to tune that down a little bit. Uh, That will come with the patch in late January. Not yeah, sure and I, tweak it, but. I think the wording here is pretty interesting. And, you know, he, he mentions that they take tons of data as well as player feedback. But he says the phrase, the Nova Warp Super is too dominant right now. And to me, that tells it's just purely stats, <laughs> you know, yeah, where they're it, like, you it know, just we got to, yeah, we got to scale here. Who could, you know, and Nova Warp is weighing everything down. I saw over a person here. with using Nova Bomb today in the Crucible. Just Weird. <laughs> Uh, another thing like, they mentioned. Are you, sick? Are you okay? Yeah, uh, the pre Forsaken subclasses. And yep. th- that was the first thing I said, especially when Blade Barrage became the new thing, which is, it's great. Blade Barrage is so fun to use. It feels awesome. It's really uh, versatile for a one off super. But I was like, poor Nova Bomb. What does it even do? <laughs> what, what is it even for? I felt so bad for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was, there was definitely a step up from uh, what we had when it came to Forsaken Supers, we're just feeling like, oh, those might be the only choice as we're yeah. uh, Although, you know, obviously the the Hammer Titan isn't the craziest choice in the, in the Crucible. So, yes, please buff the other ones. They're already <laughs> kind of good in some ways, so. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I still love them. You know, I, I've messed around either in quick play, just mixing it up. Like, all right, yeah, I'll use uh, this bottom tree striker. Haven't touched this in a while. And I'm like, Oh, there's some cool passive abilities here, but you know, you feel a little, you feel a little sad about the super when it doesn't do all the crazy stuff and Nova warps doing or something like that. I'd like to see the bottom tree sunbreaker come up. Cause like, I don't yeah. like the sunspotty ones. I, yeah. I don't think yeah. Those, those that. kind of, uh, unique mechanics similar to the arc buddies, you know, it, it feels so cool to discover a totally different way to doing something, but you still want it to, you know, kick some ass in the crucible. Yeah. Uh, Telesto is getting addressed. You know, I don't think they're going to be. So when you said this on Twitter this week, actually that, you know, <laughs> gone are the ways of nuclear nerfs, <laughs> like destroying something and saying, no, you can no longer use that. Uh, So they don't want to do that with this, which means I don't think it's going to go into a power slot or anything like that or just get completely destroyed, but tweaked a little bit because it's very strong. Um, Our guest this week will talk about a fusion rifle you can use instead of that one and save your exotic slot. So maybe people will catch on to that. But yeah, Telesto is coming back down. Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, they're, they're not going the ways of before. They're hoping that new stuff and tiny small baby step changes are the way to go. Like nothing completely remove this from the meta, bring up another thing type of situation, naturally letting the player base find their way to the next thing. So Uh, the other, the next few are, are sort of generic, you know, addressing different weapon types and archetypes, scout rifles, SMGs, fusion rifles, fusion Mm. rifles, probably going up. You're welcome, Swain. You'll, you'll love Man, it. I mean, it just means that you're going to be able to use two of them. <laughs> Maybe three. Uh, I just, there's, there's not, there's, there's like none of them in the game. I know. <laughs> it it is weird. Rifles in the game. It is weird that they're just not there. Uh, scout rifles. I've been waiting for those to get, yeah, they're getting fixed. You know, they just got their rate of fire fixed or whatever was happening with them, but still there's such a weird place and I do miss them. So, I'm interested good to see in, if they can work those in. Good in Gambit in invading. Sure, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. And that new Equinox map or whatever it's called, I just put on the Outlaw. What is it? The raid? There's the raid roll on the raid scout rifle that gets, oh, it's like Rampage and Kill Clip. And you can get them <laughs> stacked, and it's just silly. Oh, but that's I'm a take solid a quick one. moment here and talk about the most awesome bygones I got today. Okay, oh, yes, let's sir. hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, it is a kill clip outlaw bygones with a range masterwork. 
And there it you go. Is so t- oh, it's also <laughs> got ricochet rounds as well. And hammer forged. The God roll. Nice. It is the best. And I've been using it so much. It pairs perfectly with Luna's Hal. Oh my God. It is a, uh, if you can f- get yourself one of these, like I know Gambit drops are, you know, few and far between at some points. Uh, you always end up getting like armor, but get yourself one of these at some point. It is great in the crucible. Uh, it's even great in PV. Like it crosses over. Like you're constantly able to just reload real fast when you get that, that headshot and you end up uh, with kill clip and it just keeps going and going and going and you feel great. So I had a great time in the crucible with that this week. I'm still using my outlaw rampage go figure, which I enjoy quite a bit. Mm, that one's good um, too. You mentioned SMGs about getting a, a damage buff and you know, all that really came up was that they buffed the range a little bit, but that's strange to me. First of all, I've been okay that SMGs aren't very prevalent. Uh, on PC, they used to be all the rage, and then the loadout change means use a shotgun. Uh, but I, I don't know if they're if they're used much on console. But I thought, you know, I saw that range buff, and I was like, okay, that's fine, but I don't want them to be more like an auto rifle. I want them to be strong against in close quarters, you know, like keep those SMG or keep those shotgunners off me, you know, spray them up close and finish with a melee. So I don't know. I don't know what we'll see out of those. I, I can't imagine they show up on, on PC much at all, but you know, I'm still okay because I used one for like a year and uh, <laughs> I like it's really tough. It's really <laughs> tough to change people's yeah. mindset after like, yeah, there, there's probably a little bit of fatigue there. Like with people, I know for me, for sure, I saw the, the change to the range and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to use it anyway. I don't want to, like, I don't. Well, want and they to. could buff it like crazy and maybe I still wouldn't want to, right? I don't know. <laughs> That's it would my probably own. take the, take seeing it all the time and getting killed by something all the time for mm-hmm. most people to change right to it. Like it'd have to come in real hot and annoy, to be honest, it would have to annoy people for it to become more prevalent. Last but not least, well, the wave splitter, well, they're they're taking a look and then tightening. We have to talk about wave splitter because there are people here that play on PS4. Well, I don't have one, so I don't want to. It I've played with it. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I re- um, it looked so cool, man. I didn't realize when it was the the exclusive. I was like, oh, this is what it feels like. <laughs> like this is what it is. It is crazy good, and you know, honestly, you can keep it on PS4 for right now. I don't think I want it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're going to take a look at it. Uh, they're going to look at the ammo economy first and then take a look at uh, Wave Splitter's effectiveness. Because essentially you would just spawn with plenty of ammo to use it and it doesn't need much. So uh, yeah, we'll see down the line if that gets uh, some tweaks and it ends up being like Hawk Moon when it finally made it to the Xbox. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, we finally got Hawk Moon on Xbox. Oh, it's been nerfed. I just got Ursa's the first day of Black <laughs> Armory, and I'm like, well, fine. <laughs> I'll wear them. Same, same. Like <laughs> I, Dan was like, Well, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it, but it wasn't like it was last week. So <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it was my highest light for a few hours, so I put them on regardless. They look good. Uh Titan skating was the last thing. Mentioned they don't have an estimate an estimate for when this could be altered. It is it is silly on PC, that's for sure. I think in general, I've just learned to adjust and have my shotgun out, you know, like ready for it. But yeah. it is crazy. It it puts them on uh, such a different level, uh, more so than it ever was like in in D one. I think so. Uh, hopefully they figure out what to do about that because that one is a little, a little silly. But I think it's funny that they're they're like, oh, we don't want a Titan skating fix to change the way the lift ability feels for all players. But no one's using lift, guys. Just take it out of the game. Put it. Well, on. lift is right. Like what is <laughs> like, lift is like the jump, strafe lift is the thing we use, and then there's 
I don't know. Yeah. It, it's it's very weird that it's like, okay, this is what it's tied to. Jumps will, um, jumps will still be forever a weird... I'm sorry to talk about how I think of <laughs> you know, <laughs> the game theory here, but um, jumps are always weird to me. I think hunters truly are the only ones with any sort of choice. Uh, and I go between the you know in-air control versus just another bounce and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's like, I know exactly what I want. It's to move fast forward in the air. So I'll use burst glide or strafe lift. Uh, it's... Yeah. I don't know. So... Yeah, uh, that'll be nice. But they want more frequent patches. Uh, I hope they can be frequent and uh, less less just big ones that either literally blow up your favorite weapon <laughs> or, or leave the meta as it is for you know half a year. Uh, obviously, we are long gone from those days, so that's nice. And these will be uh, exciting to look forward to. Yeah, man. I am uh, always looking forward to sandbox changes even if it's just to give me another weapon to use that i didn't use before that's why i keep all my stuff just keep it all things change i'll keep like one thing of each i'll keep a few things but my vault's staying clean i it, yeah, I, i've got 500 <laughs> vault spaces like I can keep. I know, right? At this point, it's like it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I can keep twenty of the same gun and not have it phase me. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. That's all we got today, folks. There's that's nothing all else the to two do. of us got this week. That's that's all that your regular hosts of the show have to give you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch into some sounds, some melodic sounds, uh, which will serve as a break between segments on the show, and then after that short period of musicality we're going to bring on our guest uh he's a great guy he's super nice he's super cool and he's uh handsome he's, yeah he's, handsome. he's a good looking guy but he's he's carved out a path for himself in the crucible and his build is recognizable when you hear his name so we're going to talk to him about that and uh i'll just get uncomfortable while you guys just freak out about fusion rifles yes aaron teal we know it's good i get it <laughs> All right, musical break. Folks, we got music this week coming to you from the one, the only, Jay Parade, based in Charleston, West Virginia. Go check them out. jparade.bandcamp.com. Find them on Bandcamp, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, all the good stuff. Just search for J Parade. You'll find them there. And hey, if you're a musician and you would like to have your music featured on Crucible Radio, uh, it's really a very straightforward process. You just send us an email. Send us some of those tunes. Crucibleradio at gmail.com. everyone welcome back from our musical break uh, we are here this week with a he feels like a brother to me a titan <laughs> in bro. some ways a titan bro a fusion bro Ooh, yeah we have lego welcome to the show lego thanks so much man yeah thanks wayne uh glad to be here uh long time listener first time guest yeah 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 <laughs> i feel uh i feel a little like outnumbered because there's <laughs> yeah. like a there's like a couple of fusion rifle mains in this in this Discord chat right now, and that's weird. But I just want to say, I'm a Titan main now, so guys, we're cool, right? Yeah. We're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play Titans all around. Right. All right, yeah, cool. I forgot <laughs> that you had gone the Titan route. I saw your picture with Luna's and Not Forgotten, I think, right? With your Titan. I'm surprised, but welcome, brother. <laughs> oh, it's 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 good. Well, I've talked about it plenty on this show. He's but, faced uh, the light. <laughs> I have. I've I've figured it out. But uh Lego, you have uh you, you upload amazing clips to Twitter on a almost daily basis of your Titan build of the fusion rifle. And uh most people would probably recognize you from the recent moment of the week where your montage was uh featured in the TWAB with the amazing 
Marvel Studios theme, oh, which was like I was so uh, just like, so cool. Can I just say how mad I was that <laughs> you thought of that before me? <laughs> oh man! Well, it's it like came naturally whenever you're doing the Superman Thunder Crash thing, just mm-hmm. all the time. I just like every time I just want to scream like Bring me Thanos, you know. <laughs> but I, I, you know, can't because we're playing comp, you know, and that's what the whole thing was. But we did have quite a few laughs in the video, and it was just so much fun putting that together, especially looking back on that accomplishment of going legend. Like it Hmm. feels insane to make it there in bones. I'm sure you can attest to that as well. It was grueling and exhausting, but we did it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy feeling. Especially as someone like, I think of myself as kind of a average player, especially when I started in D1, started listening to Crucible Radio, uh, eventually made my way to the Resolute Clan somehow in uh, the Taken (laughs) King. Um, And it wasn't because, like, I know a lot of people who know of the Clan Resolute think of it as like, you know, KJ Hovey, M. Tash, Truvanger, all really amazing Crucible players. And I kind of always felt myself as just like slightly above average, but never like crazy, amazing, good player. And I really feel like taking the time in destiny to learn from different people and improve my own skills really showed itself completely. Once I hit legend, um, this past season, like that was the, like, I am up here with these guys. Like, I didn't think I was, I looked at up from the bottom and was like, is there any way (laughs) I could ever get that gun? I don't think so. But then you pass Luna's and you're like, I think I could go for it. I think I could do this, you know? And so it really was incredible. Even if there were, three weeks in a row of me sliding back down in points and you're like, ah, oh, Telesto and all this other stuff. And you're like, can I do it and play the way that I want to play or how much do I need to change? So it, it's been mm-hmm. a crazy journey. So before we get more into that, Lego, I want to know a little bit about your gaming background. You want to tell the people what sort of games got you started? What led you to Destiny? Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Um, so like a lot of other people in the shooter world coming from a Halo background, you know, a lot of people would say that. I guess mine <laughs> would start even earlier than that. When I first got like GoldenEye for the N64, I was like, ah, oh, yes, this is it. And that kind of transition to Halo. And then I found myself playing a lot of Battlefield uh, back in the day. And that was like probably my main shooter until Destiny, which was my first community shooter, I guess you would say. It's it's a whole new mm-hmm. different kind of game for me, at least, and a lot of other people who have played shooters not coming from an RPG world. And so I feel like it really was, it, it was funny because uh, Destiny was a game that when I first saw it, I wasn't interested in at all because I everything in the trailer was third person. And I was like, I don't play (laughs) third person game. I play first person shooters. You know, this this looks kind of like Uncharted or one of those other games, which are great games storytelling wise. I just don't get into them as much from a first person shooter perspective. It kind of like takes me out. Um, And so I saw Destiny and was like, I don't know if that's the game for me. And now once I played the beta, I was like, I'm in. This is amazing. (laughs) I pulled out the Sparrow one time and I was like, this is it. I, this a feel, I don't know what it is, but the feel of Destiny was so amazing. And so that's kind of what brought me here. Really is special regardless of what, you know, activities you like in it or something like that. It just feels like the coolest game you've ever played every time you, like you said, hop on that Sparrow. It's just like nothing else. Absolutely. And that's the, the thing about fusion rifles too. We kind of mentioned it earlier, but fusion rifles are a gun that's kind of specifically in destiny and nowhere else. I'm sure there's other games that have something similar, but fusion rifles in destiny are this feeling kind of gun that you have to interpret other players movements, but at the same time, your movement has to be perfect for it to all line up exactly the way you want it to. And I've never had a gun in another game, another first person shooter feel that way. So that's what immediately drew me into fusion rifles and made me fall in love with them. It really is like particular to Bungie for them to create like not just fusion rifles, but like almost all of the guns Mm. have this like visceral, like feeling of like, Ooh, yes, this is, this is very nice. Even like, I mean, obviously it's got, we've got our slower versions of pretty much every gun, but when you find that one that feels so perfect, like the reload's nice. And like, I don't think I've ever had that in another game that was like 
it just made it all feel good. And then shooting it, uh, fusion rifles. Yeah, fusion Oof. rifles. Well, let's 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 talk about them because you boys love them. Um, you know, I'm 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 a founder of Voop Nation. I go way back with Oof. them. I remember my my Pantaray and the old Plan C and stuff like that. But I think since the the loadout changes happened, I haven't really picked them up. And the change of damage, uh, how what how they feel in a special slot right now, uh, definitely plays differently. But what about a fusion is really feeling good to you right now? And how does it change your game versus what we might put in quotes the meta? I think that for me. I go along with a lot of the things that Swain has said on this podcast multiple times about <laughs> particularly the Arendtel FR4 under pressure perk on that thing is just incredible. But how it differs maybe from other play styles is the fusion rifle gives you a one hit kill weapon that operates in the range of a hand cannon down from the closest range to that medium long range. You can one hit kill somebody if you're using your gun correctly. And that can really throw people off from the shotgun rushing or if they're playing at range with a hand cannon, you really surprise people. Not as much so with Telesto. They know what they're getting in for. But I think the Arintel and potentially other guns later on, we may see more high impact fusion rifles hit at even further distances than the Arintel right now. And they definitely hit further than Telesto. So it really throws people off and in comp, it's so satisfying to have people think you're going to be at one range and then completely decimate them from a much further range. <laughs> that's that's probably the most unique thing for them. They've always operated in metas that weren't for them. Yeah. And uh, people get like get very one track mind with their uh, their play style. So they kind of end up either trying to push you too much or they stay like just in the per they always tend to be in the perfect range for fusion rifles yes no i do love that and i love that it makes you play a different way than you would play with other weapons too like not only are they good in all these different metas but you're having to play this mind game with the other people because they're all about interpreting movement just like you know, any gun in Destiny, but it's not a pull the trigger and they're dead like a shotgun or a sniper. It's a charge up and they're dead. And so you really have to pay attention to what other people are doing and keep yourself in that mid-range one-hit kill area, but not too far away where a pulse is going to melt you, but not too close where, you know, a sidearm SMG or shotgun are going to melt you. It's a fun, I think I really love the mental game of it all. Mm. Well, what kind of practical things would you do? So, f say, for example, you're grinding your way to Legend. You're going to go up against some smart players who can adapt. Like, what kind of things would you maybe change midway through a game if you maybe get that that nice and easy long-distance fusion kill, but the next time the guy's not going to just stand in a lane or something like that? Do you do anything different? Yeah, for sure. I think that... I think that for me, my teammates play a large role in that. In comp, you're not... Hmm alone and i think uh in a previous episode y'all had i think it was kinsta who was on who was talking about the team uh dynamics and what it what your role in a team looks like and for me whenever i'm playing in a team and people start realizing what ranges they're getting hit from another guy on my team will be running a sniper or someone else will be running a shotgun. I don't think it would fare well for everyone to run fusions because you would obviously have this huge weak spot in your team up close where you would just get melted by shotguns. And there's certain parts of the map that you have to play to too. Like even if the other team knows that they're going to get melted at a certain range, I can play to certain areas of the map that make it to where they have to engage me at that distance. There's no corners for them to sneak up on me on. Um, there's no lane for them to snipe me on. So really playing to, you have like these golden pockets of the map that you need to stick to. And you can do that. You can do that in comp in a lot of different ways, positioning yourself just to be in the area that works just for you. Is it just the Aaron till or like, mm, are we, are we waiting for a slight buff to make all the other archetypes sort of feel better? Do you mess with the other ones at all? That's a really good question because I have so many people tweet at me because they know I'm the fusion guy. Look at this main <laughs> ingredient I got. Yeah, it has yeah. under pressure that perk that you always talk about. And I'm like, yeah, that one's good <laughs> for the main ingredient. And it's just, 
not as consistent right now. And when I'm looking for a fusion rifle, while it does have a lot to do with aim assist and range plays into that, um, and you can get a good range main ingredient or other fusion rifle, right now having the max impact of the air intel combined with the magic aim assist of the range can get you just this mm. most consistent feeling that feels so good you know you're going to land that shot when you charge it and hit it the ranges that you know you can hit at and it's just so consistent that i would tell everyone to go for the air intel and even if you don't have a new one just get the one out of your collection yeah because it, it works so well i i actually have gotten maybe three or four air intel drops new ones with random rolls but none of them are as good as just the og one <laughs> out of your collections i've got 7,500 kills on it at this point, and I <laughs> haven't found anything that works better. I I, I really want to like say, though, even if you do find a newer one, uh, like I did, I got the what would be considered the perfect roll to an extent, it's missing the, like, the sights that uh. bump its impact to max. Mm -hmm. So... I it's it's missing that just that little bit. It's nice, but it's not. It it tends to not be as nice as the uh, like the collections one, even with the extra perk. That's so, the demigod so role. Interesting. It does feel yeah. like it's like this slight, ah, just barely. And I know what you're talking about because I had a friend um, let me use one of their Aaron tells that was supposedly he was like this role is the best, and it didn't feel quite as right, even though it had under pressure. Backup plan, had a great range, but it didn't have that max impact. So I know what you're talking about, Swain. And it was frustrating because <laughs> I was like, this gun is supposed to be good on paper. It's missing like five damage. It shouldn't matter, but it does for some reason. So I think, you know, if fusion rifles could get to a point later on where I would look for different ones, like we just had the new Pinnacle Vanguard weapon come out and I was totally planning on chasing that. And then I saw that on paper it didn't quite look right, quite right, and it didn't have under pressure. And so I ended up not putting it as a priority for myself, even though I do want to check it out later. The Arintel is just has everything you would ever want. <laughs> I do highly suggest it. It's it's Ooh. it. You're gonna need to play into all of the uh, specific things to make it work, but it is going to be worth worth the wait so oh, i got tingles um <laughs> I'm, I'm a little excited <laughs> so, like we have talked a, a bunch about fusion rifles here but i want to know how in particular you use them and how would you suggest someone goes about like going through comp with with even with a fusion rifle because like i found myself every once in a while switching to shotgun depending on how far up in the ranks i got <laughs> but how are you maintaining that through i think there's a few different ways that you can make sure you're successful with a fusion rifle in comp. One of those ways is just being able to win your ones. That's like the basics. You got to be able to do that. And I think Rumble's a great place to start. If you're trying to play comp with a weapon that isn't the meta and you haven't done your dues in Rumble there, you need to go back and make sure that you're on point with your 1v1s. Because if you aren't winning those, you're not going to get far in comp. So once you're confident there, then play to your strengths in competitive. And kind of like I said earlier, map control, as far as like playing the map to your strengths, make people go where you want them to. Don't feel like because everybody rushes B with a shotgun, you can have your two other teammates that are running a shotgun rush into B and you guard the door that lanes in where you know the enemy is going to come from. You really have to set people at that distance. And when they get close, you have to back off. And that there's some trade-off there. You can't play exactly maybe the way your teammates are wanting you to play. I was playing comp with a guy the other night that was like, okay, push with me right here. And I was like, I'm not going to push the same way you're going to push. Here we go, you know. <laughs> but you, you've you got to play around your teammates and really know your team's to be able to know where they're going to go and where you can position yourself to be in the right range that you need to be. Another thing that really helps me use fusion rifles effectively is the class that I run. I feel like you could run other classes that weren't as well, did, 
I feel like you could run other classes that didn't work as well for getting away if you get in a tight spot with your range or you couldn't do enough damage if they get too close. And I feel like the Code of the Missile Titan, for me, helps me get away fast with Ballistic Slam or you can Titan Skate somewhat, you know, not so much on console, but a little bit. It helps getting away if you know how to skate really well. Um, Inertia Override is another perk that like really helps me grab ammo, charge it when I need to. Just things I don't even think about. There's so many things in that class that help Mm. me use fusion rifles effectively and play at the ranges that I want to within comp. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, that's uh, as as iconic to your play style as fusions are. I feel like this new code of the missile thing is as well. And I do think it's a really strong class, but maybe doesn't get the same kind of playtime as some others at the moment. So let's break it down. Like, if you mind going through each and every one of those perks and maybe discuss a few ways of which it comes up in your play, like you were just mentioning. Yeah, for sure. The, the, Titan Code of the Missile is something that's kind of frowned upon in comp a lot of times. I get into teams where they find out that I'm running it and they're like, dude, what are you doing on that class? You want to switch to a defender? Like, that's the OP class right (laughs) now. And you're like, well, I put time into learning this class. And I even had another guy on the team was like, no, dude, this is Lego. Just wait a second. You know, just let him play it (laughs) out just one round and see. And it is a risky class because you have a lot of abilities that are really strong, but you get one chance with them. Your Ballistic Mm. Slam, you lose it and it's gone. Your Titan uh, Thunder Crash, you use that and it's gone. And if you miss, that is a Nova Warp you could have taken out. Um, And so there's a lot of gamble in these abilities, but they really pay off if you use them right. So I'll kind of start with the Ballistic Slam I just love that Ballistic Slam gives you the opportunity to take people off guard. The mental game of working around, getting close where you weren't able to previously, like you could be halfway across the map and someone, you took one fusion rifle shot at them, say, and you hit like half. You thought you were going to hit a lot more, but you're too far away, way too far to melee them normally. And so you're able to just jump up a little bit, even if they're hiding behind a box and slam them perfectly to finish off that kill where you may have had to cover distance that would have gotten you killed otherwise. And you only get one shot with that ballistic slam. So you really need to know you're going to finish. And even if you don't have the ability to one hit kill finish them, you don't get any shots off. If you aim your ballistic slam just right, you can disorient them in a way. It's not like there's an effect or anything like that, but you can aim it to where you are just directly behind them. And once you land, there's like a camera thing that happens where you can rotate the camera and melee Mm -hmm. them, even though they don't know where you are. So if you've never played Code of the Missile before, it can be kind of disorienting at first, um, but it's really helpful for disorienting the enemies so that you can get that one-two punch off without ever taking a shot. It's like a melee melee kind of thing. And you can actually practice this in PvE with like phalanx shields um, because you can slam in front of them with the ballistic shield and it doesn't hurt them. But if you hit them from behind, then it one hit kills them. So just take like insurmountable skull for it and jump up and slam as many times as you want. As long as you're killing things, you'll keep having it and you can kind of practice getting that disorienting melee down by slamming behind uh, Cabal with their phalanx shields. I know that's not a PvP thing, but it'll really help you out um, if you're struggling with getting that down to where you're killing people and disorienting them every time because you really have to hit them from behind to get the one-off kill there. That's some good advice. And then I haven't spent much time in the Code of Missile, so it's nice to hear these little tips. Oh, and uh, Swain, you'd love this too. In Gambit, Code of the Missile is... The most fun. I don't, I'm not a huge Gambit fan myself. This is probably the one area where me and Swain (laughs) probably differ a little (laughs) bit. Um, But uh, Ballistic Slam in Gambit with the insurmountable skull for it lets you continually Ballistic Slam over and over again until you've cleared (laughs) all the PvE enemies on the map. And by that time, you've got your super up because you've punched so many things. (laughs) <laughs> and you can go thunder crash something. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really good practice, too, uh, for going into competitive where you need to slam just right. You've had a lot of practice in Gambit or PvE to really slam just the perfect area. So Ballistic Slam is a ton of fun. 
Um, and I think Inertia Override, another perk on the Titan skill tree, Code of Missile is something that people overlook. They just look at Ballistic Slam and Thunder Crash. But Inertia mm-hmm. Override is... When you slide over ammo, it automatically refills whatever weapon you have out. So you have to change to that weapon if that's the one you want to reload. And then it also gives you extra damage on all your weapons. So even if you slide over a brick with your fusion rifle, you can switch to your primary and use the extra damage bullets to hit someone down really fast. Uh, The Hmm. best way that I've ever seen to use this is to slide over ammo and pull out a high impact sniper rifle and body shot them. One hit kill, body shot. I haven't done the (laughs) math or science on it yet, but I've never had someone not die to a body shot. So I'm pretty sure it's any resilience. I can't say that for sure, but it's ridiculous. (laughs) Fallout, get to testing. Do the numbers. (laughs) Fallout, do it. That's that's huge. I mean, I mean, yeah. Even if it's not a absolute one shot kill uh, completely, I mean, it's an it's an underutilized perk right now. I don't see much discussions on it. So that's, I mean, that's a huge boost. And and I always say like people, you know, don't don't value the damage something can do even if it's without a kill. Especially if you're playing with tight teammates. Like all they got to do is breathe on the guy, and then they're gonna go down because you just put so much damage. Yeah. Into them. That's a good point. Uh, And a lot of people don't realize that it also gives you the confidence, like it gives damage on all your guns. So it gives you that confidence boost when you're sliding in, picking up ammo from somebody else to continue pushing and continue pushing. I'll tell you, this isn't so much for the competitive playlist, but for just normal quick play, you can just keep pushing. If you're using One-Eyed Mask, which is healing you as you're going, and then you're running Code of the Missile, so you're sliding over ammo as you go too, it's automatically refilling all your stuff. You just keep going and you feel indestructible because you're reloading your gun, getting an overshield, getting your health, and you, you just keep pushing and pushing until finally a team of three people take you out because that's what it's going (laughs) to take to take you down. (laughs) And it's great for your grenade launcher kills right now. If you're working on that quest to get the mountaintop, I have had so many double kills just using my malicious birthright. Once you get inertia override going, you know how you have that problem where the proximity debt doesn't quite one hit kill them all the time, especially if you're on console And Inertia Override really gives you the confidence and really lets you know that I'm going to one hit kill this guy. Okay, reload. My Inertia Override still going. I'm going to one hit kill this next guy. And you can get those <laughs> double kills way faster than I feel like I would be able to if I were running any other subclass on my Titan. Definitely. The last ability for the Titan Code of the Missile is that Thunder Crash, which is also, as I mentioned before, that super high risk reward because you got that one chance for it. It's another one of those things that you really have to practice on in PvE or quick play or something because you can really test how far you can go with it because it can go surprisingly far and you can test exactly how the maneuverability works you can kind of pull up at the end to extend it but it also slows it down and i've had teammates a lot of time tell me like you look like you were just floating in the air not moving at all because the pull up kind of slows you down but it works so well for (laughs) seeing where a group of enemies are when you're in comp you can't use it like you would the old titan slam where it's like kind of a panic slam that's what it was known for now we got the blade barrage panic slam but (laughs) The the thunder crash, it let you gotta pull it beforehand. You can't just run in because you'll get melted. For instance, a uh, Nova warp will one hit shot you out of your thunder crash. So you really have to surprise them around a corner, especially in comp. People know what they're doing. It makes it just such a risky move to use your thunder crash once they know you're there. You kind of have to know they're there around the corner and know that you can fly around the corner and smash them just perfectly. Well, Lego, you s- you made the trek all the way to the top <laughs> <laughs> this season. Um, I know from my experience, you know, comp can get a little bit, you know. Uh, rough when you're playing with friends uh what got you through it what kept you positive what sort of self-improvement did you find through it yeah so i 
am a pretty positive person just in general. I was playing with somebody this Ooh, week in no. Kong. <laughs> and they were like, you're like playing with a parent constantly encouraging me and telling me <laughs> we got this. And I was like, well, thanks, I think, maybe. <laughs> Um, I, tr- I tend to get excited about stuff too. And so I think that makes it easy for me to encourage my teammates and stuff like that. I don't feel like I need as much encouragement because I bring enough hype myself when I'm playing sometimes. <laughs> um, but like, even when I get excited about something and talking, I'm worried a little bit that I might be too loud. Even right now, my wife one time even tried to turn the volume down on me in the car. Like she grabbed the volume knob in the car and was like, oh, wait, it's my husband talking. I, I can't actually turn him down. <laughs> um, so I get pretty excited about things. I get pretty hyped. Uh, and you can go on those losing streaks where you're te- you just kind of fall apart. I think one of the things is taking a break. If you're on that streak and you start losing, taking a break, gathering your thoughts, looking at what you did. A lot of times in the moment, Looking at what you did doesn't really help, but when you're looking at the clips later, you can say, oh, I did do that, or my teammate told me this and I wasn't listening, so Mm -hmm. now I can think about those mistakes and improve, or I wasn't playing in the range that I should have been in. So not only looking at your footage, but taking the break, taking the time to look at your footage. Um, Another thing is playing with the people that you jive with the best. You can play with people that are really good, but if they're constantly yelling at you or just calling out things that if my rule of thumb is if somebody never calls out anything them they did themselves that was wrong that it's difficult for me to take advice from them too because I'm having a a disconnect between what is going on wrong in the team if it's always the other people's fault so I try to play with people that analyze the situation as a whole and we can move forward as a whole as a team you're asking people to <laughs> To self-criticize mid-game, that's a big ask. I'm (laughs) I'm kidding because everyone should be capable of doing it. But yeah, I mean, that can be the hardest thing. Even in the most simple times, you're just like, oh, stupid. I can't believe that happened. It's like, well, I mostly made it happen. (laughs) It didn't go well for me, but it was mostly my doing. I want to say- It's hard to to address. Yeah, I want to say, trust me, I do- get mad and cloud the comms with, oh, I died to that shotgun from that range. What? (laughs) You know, (laughs) as we all do. Um, But I do try to take into account. There's something I I heard said once uh, that was even if 99% of what somebody says about you is false, there's this 1% that is caused from something that you did that is true. And I always think about that whenever I have a teammate. What we say about Yelp reviews. <laughs> it does apply to Yelp reviews and podcast reviews too. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh boy. No, and even if it completely comes from the wrong side of whatever they're thinking, maybe they're just mad at something else, but there is this 1% of like, eh, maybe I did push in too hard. Maybe at least I should think about what the other person said. Um, and once I'm to that place where I can hear what other people said, it kind of helps me self-improve too. like think about it for myself. Well, maybe I did do that wrong. Well, I'll try doing it next time. But I think one thing that helps me stay positive through that whole process is knowing that there's another round. There's always another game. You can always go back in. There's always, you know, the next week of comp. This is a seasonal thing. Um, hmm. And starting early is another thing. We were kind of discussing that pre-show. We were kind of discussing that earlier, but going in, uh, early helps you not try to rush and finish it at the end because that can be stressful and there's no way not to get upset with yourself when you're losing and you know you have limited time. Do not put yourself in that situation <laughs> of pushing too hard. Uh, it can only magnify the uh, the bad feelings. <laughs> the, uh, the the sh- you know the individual games feel like sprints, but you know grinding comp truly is a marathon. I think it's funny because like starting this season, you know, we had nothing to do last week before the content, blah, blah, blah. So let's play some comp. But I had a pretty good start. You know, the lower ranks, it's pretty, you know, smooth going games. And then they get a little more intense. You're a little more focused. But I put up a good streak. And I think I got to 1,200 before uh, keeping a win streak alive. 
And that was with, you know, days in between. And I think it was like the fourth time I was going to like, I'm like, okay, into comp. I got my win streak up. Like, don't, I'm like, you know, I haven't warmed up much today. Like, let's win this game. We lost the first game. Oh. And I was like, I was like very relieved. <laughs> like, I think the feeling was relief that I'm not worried about trying to keep this perfect game streak throughout the season because of course I'm not going to keep a perfect streak. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> I am not that good. So I think really that first loss felt so relieving because I was like, great. Yep. It's going to be, it's going to be some of those. You're going to lose your streak. You're going to go on them. You're going to drop points. You're going to go up. And having that really clear in my head of like, we're going to go up and down tonight. The goal is to be, you know, plus 10. And that, that really helps you realize the big picture and what you're actually playing for. And that it's going to be all right if a game goes poorly. Yeah, you can kind of view that like the way you view Rumble. Like you're not going to win every game that is mm-hmm. unrealistic, you know, going in. But you want to do the best that you can and improve. And I think you you surprised me by your answer that you're like, oh, it's relief is what I feel <laughs> right now. But it's true. Sometimes you just need a reset. And I think sometimes that can also be swapping teams. I know that there is benefit to playing with the same people all the time but sometimes there are some nights where I'll just play with one team and it's just not working out between us and we end for the night because we all get just a little frustrated and then we pick up with another we kind of split off into other groups and I end up playing with another team and then we do really well and it was kind of like that reset of like okay we're done we had our go as our team let's let's pick up you know, one more team and see how it goes with these other guys. Oh, we're driving really well tonight, um, playing our ranges right, working as a team. These two are using a shotgun. This guy's using a sniper. I'm using a fusion and it's working out really well. And so sometimes just hitting that reset is so nice. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, we lost that first game, but all we sort of did was like, well, you know, we're warming up and getting a feel for it. And uh, we let them control power for a really long time in the middle of that game. But we almost brought it back. And then as soon as we were into the next game, it was like, cool, go time. And you can just sort of reset mentally and check off. Here's a few things that went wrong in the last game, but there's hundreds of more to go, possibly, potentially, depending on how good you are. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, it's just a long haul. It is a long grind that can feel like it's it's about these like high stakes, play fast games when really it's just like, you know, can you stay at it for a couple hours consistently? Can you play uh, as well your first game as you did on your last game? That's that's tough to wrap your brain around, especially in a video game. I think what you said about you had that match where you almost brought it back and almost won. Those are games that you, if you can look at them and be like, man, that was a close game. We played really well, even though we lost or even that was a close game back and forth. We almost had it. What could we do better? Those are the kinds of ways to think about games where you don't get too upset that you lost the rank. But man, I had a good night of comp. You can Mm. even have a whole night where you go back and forth like that and and you may not actually improve any points towards the rank that you're trying to hit. But you may have learned a lot playing against the players that you played against. I had the opportunity going up the ranks at one point where we played ZK, one second kill, um, and pure chill three times in a row. And we were like, God, could you stop? Like, why do we keep (laughs) matching just the craziest good players in the game right now? But I learned a lot from playing those games, too, and learning that, oh, my fusion rifle can hold up in these places against players that are really good, and it can't hold up in these places. And so as long as you're taking out, like, oh, we had a good time playing with each other or I had a good time learning, um... Those are those are the things that like keep you positive, I think. Well, this is all really good. You know, this is the right mentality to have. Um, what else do we talk about? Well, what exotic are you using with this with this Titan build? Yes, there obviously is one really good exotic for the Titan right now, the one-eyed mask, which is haven't amazing. heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of that one? <laughs> um, no, is it is it good? I, I never heard, never came up. So that one is amazing, but also, as I mentioned earlier, especially if you're playing Gambit, something that's PvE, PvP, the insurmountable skull fort is great for giving you a ballistic slam back every time you get a kill. Before I got the one-eyed mask, I was even running that for a little while in competitive to get the 
slam, like make sure the other guy's weak, get that slam. And then I could immediately do it again to their teammate that was around the corner. And something I didn't <laughs> mention earlier about ballistic slam, you can kind of bend it around walls and ceilings, destiny shapes to go underneath objects they can't see you at and hit them when they totally don't expect it. And when you have that happen, you can really get the one-two punch off. But the insurmountable skull for it lets you finish off someone and immediately go around the next corner and do it again. Oh, and it gives you your health back. So if you're diving into huge swarms of enemies in Gambit, you get your health back even if you're weak. And if you dive into the enemy team in PvP and get that kill, you get your health back, can do it again, or just fight with a shotgun with full health on the ground. So that one's a pretty good underrated exotic, I'd say. It's not as all the time for every situation as one I'd mask, but it's a pretty mm-hmm. fun exotic. Have you messed have you messed around with the synthesis with that thing where you can just like <laughs> fly into a crowd. That's really a quick play thing. I guess it doesn't apply. I'm glad you brought it up (laughs) because it doesn't apply for the most time to come. It doesn't apply for the most part to comp, but there are those occasions. Like when it happens, you're like, oh my gosh, that was the (laughs) coolest thing. Same thing with Dune Marchers because it like chains two people around you. Um, And that's kind of all the time because it helps your running ability a little bit. But I think Syntheseps are cool for the consistency of further melee damn it or reach for their melee reach but i feel like there are other exotics that i would use more frequently one one of those other exotics is the crest of alpha loop by and i know that is kind of unheard of too because you're just creating an extra orb but it also gives you health back when you put up a barrier and a lot of times when you put up a barrier you're trying to block yourself from enemy Mm -hmm. fire so that's a great one for rumble people do not expect you to have your health back as a titan when you haven't done anything but put up a barrier Um, (laughs) and it's also really helpful and competitive when you've only got your code of the missile thunder crash and you get two kills that's three huge orbs that give someone like 75 percent of their super if your teammate had just used theirs so for a little while when no one had that many super mods on i was running like a decked out titan with four super mods had my crest of alpha loop by my thunder crash ready to roll i'd have my super up instantly because i also had the helmet on that gave me extra super for fusion rifle kills And as soon as I had my super up, even if it was just one kill, just immediately kill that guy, give two big fat orbs to my teammates so they could get their Nova Warp or Blade Barrage up or whatever they're running and just keep rolling through my super as fast as I could. So Chris of Albaluvi can be fun for that, especially when you have a Thunder Crash that's just a one and done kind of super. Well, and hey, it might be good to remember with the upcoming sandbox changes, (laughs) who who knows what we'll be using in two months from now. Gotta gotta keep that one eyed mass. I know one eyed mass is really <laughs> is really strong right now. I I whatever they gotta do, they gotta do. I'm I'm all for I f- it. I feel nothing. I think if I think it's great. I think it's fine. Hot take there. <laughs> oh, but Lego, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, man. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. I love talking fusion rifles, titans, and everything. You too. Me and Swain have in common. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where can people find you if they want to watch your montage or follow you on Twitter for some juicy v- fusion rifle clips? Yeah, they can find me at Lego Le Flash. That's at Lego L E Flash on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Right on. Anything super hype for with this with these patch notes they just they hinted at? Anything crazy coming up in the future that you're just eager to get your hands on well you know i saw that we're looking into more range and impact for fusion rifles little tidbit they put in there i was like (laughs) wait what i have this fusion rifle that can hit someone across the river in distant shore and you're telling me you want to give it more range and impact okay i'm i'm down please do why did i ask a question that i knew the answer to okay all right thank you so much Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Well, that's the show, folks. Swain, it's been great doing a podcast with you, as always. Yeah, I know. It's nice the two of us get into the podcast, you know, recording studio. Once a week. Get it done. Doing our thing. 
talk about little, the crucible. Little one on one, little wombo Just combo. The two of us. Just the two. <laughs> Uh, go to crucibleradio.com. It's on the space internet. Remember that? Yeah. That's a joke internet. that you and I made years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Dock Worker Swain? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. And uh, that's the only character I can think of. <laughs> um, we have uh, some fun Patreon changes coming up uh, on our Patreon. That's where Patreon changes happen. So keep an eye out there. We're going to post something on our Twitter about it as well. But uh, we'll let you know. Uh, not much as far as the things you can get, but the frequency in which you will get them. More of it. Mm-hmm. And more affordable. And hey, it's uh, it's officially the holiday time. It's chilly even here in L.A. So why not head on over to the store, pick up yourself a mug, uh, I'm assuming it's there by the time this comes out. It's really cool. You'll love it. We'll post it on Twitter and check it there. Also, go listen to my podcast, Gaming and Help. Me and my buddy Dan, we talk about video games. It's great. Okay? It's fun. Birds was just on it. I don't know. He's like a, another friend that we know. Uh, just yes. a guy. But he was just on that podcast. and uh, it, well, he, did, he did pretty great. You mean Alex, right? Alex, right. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was <laughs> Destiny names. You know how it is. Bye, Swain. Bye. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.